So the last time I came down to the driving range, there's a driver in the shop that I've never seen and it was a tailor-made driver. It was brand new. And get this, the price was only £130. I was like, how is this so cheap? So it got me thinking, now that the new tailor-made driver's come out, the sim driver that cost nearly £500, I'm gonna go and buy the £130 secret tailor-made driver and compare it against the sim. I've got some questions I wanna know. How does it perform different? How is there such a difference in price when they are both brand new and both come from tailor-made? Right, let's go and buy one of these 130 pound tailor-made drivers. All right, so I've arrived. I'm gonna go in store. I'm not gonna film in store. Hopefully I can pick one up and I'm gonna give it a whack on the driving range to get my first impressions. So, bad news. They didn't have one in stock. I'm actually gutted because it's a mega day and it'd be nice to test it. So they're gonna bring one from a different store and they reckon they'll get it here for tomorrow. So let's pick it up tomorrow and then take it on the course to test it against the SIM driver. So here it is, the TaylorMade RBZ Black. I picked it up yesterday. I'm excited to hit it. This driver looks mean. I like this black finish. Now, I paid £129 for this. When it first came out last year, it was £229 at full retail. Now, if you compare that to, let's say, the TaylorMade SIM driver, which I'm going to test it against this video, that's coming out at £400 at the moment. So even at full retail, this was pretty much half the price. So why was it half the price? Is it the fact that materials aren't as good? Is it the fact that the performance isn't going to be as good? Or am I going to be surprised? Is this driver going to perform just as good as the £400 tailor-made SIM driver? I'm intrigued to know whether this is a good purchase or whether you're actually better to buy a second-hand driver for a much cheaper price. So reading from the website about the RBZ Black driver features. It's got a loft sleeve technology, which is impressive for that price. Speed pocket, ultralight titanium core, satin black finish, which I mentioned looks mean, and a two year guarantee. I'm not quite sure what they're saying with that. All in all, designed for more distance, more forgiveness, blah, blah, blah. We've heard it all before. 460cc sized head, so it's maximum size. I'm intrigued to give it a whack. Now, before I test it against the TaylorMade Sim, to make it a nice fair test, I'm gonna hit some looseners before going RBZ Black, TaylorMade Sim, GC Quad Pro V1s to see if this is any good. Okay, so that is warm up complete. Swinging it well, to be fair. Right, let's get the test going. We've got TaylorMade Sim, we're going with the Sim Max. The reason being because it's non-adjustable, there's no weight in it, so I feel like it's a better matchup with RBZ Black. I've got the loft in just over nine degrees, and you've seen all the spiel about this driver. It features so much technology. Speed injected twist face, inertia generator along the back, carbon crown, all designed to be faster swinging, more distance, more forgiving and at a price tag as it comes out to retail at £400. So I'm gonna hit 10 with this first, then we're gonna switch over to RBZ Black. Let's see what the Sim Max can do. So you might have seen from my initial review of the TaylorMade Sim Driver, I love the look of it. The chalk white crown with the carbon finish looks incredible, and I think it's a really good performing driver. But as we test these two drivers now, I can go into a shop and buy this for £400, or the RBZ Black for £129. For a third of the price, how is the RBZ going to compare against the Sim Max? Right, let's hit some Pro V1s, GC Quad. I am very intrigued to see if there's much of a difference. It's a strong start, a little bit up the left, but a good solid hit. That's ripped. It's going to be longer than the first one. I hit that one much better. Okay, the last one of 10 with the Sim Max. 
They've been decent shots so far. Let's finish on one more good one. That might be the best of the bunch. That is as straight as I'm gonna hit it. Right, without really diving too much into the averages of Sim Max, I'm gonna go straight into RBZ Black Driver before then finding out the averages between the two. Let's get into RBZ Black. All right, so RBZ Black, first shot I'm gonna hit with this. Now, a couple of notes. It is in the stock shaft it comes in. I'll get a lot of comments saying, why don't you put the Sim Max shaft in this? Well, that will kind of defeat the object because the price of that driver includes the shaft. The price of this driver includes this shaft. So I'm gonna test it in the correct setups. I like this black head. I do. I like the satin finish. It's, it's, a, it's a really good shape. It doesn't stand out or remind me of any tailor-made driver of the past. So it's not as if it's just a RBZ white now turned black. That is a nice looking head. Right, let's give it a hit. One thing I do notice is that grip feels a little bit, mm, not very premium. It feels a little bit thinner than the, uh, shot, the grip on the other driver. A little bit kind of shorter in length anyway, the grip is. Right, let's give this a hit. No more talking. Let's get it hitting. RBZ Black. How close can it get to Sim Max? Or could it even beat it? That sounded really good. Not as carbon or dead as the Sim Max. Also a note, this test isn't going to be solely on distance. The Sim Max is designed for aerodynamics, more club head speed with the new shape and inertia generator. The fact that it should help you hit it straighter with the speed injected twist face and the fact they've pushed that face to the absolute limit of performance. So the Sim Max has a lot to live up to. With the RBZ Black, it's not got as many bells and whistles. They're claiming a little bit of aerodynamics, but really I'm intrigued to know not only on distance, but how does this driver perform on dispersion as an all-round driver, look, sound, feel. Give it a thorough head to head. Right, let's go with shot number two. Big story as well with Sim Max, it's all about forgiveness, speed off the face, off, off centered hits. And you know, I'm not a robot, I'm a human golfer. Um, so I'm gonna test it off centered hits as well. Naturally, it's gonna happen in these 10 shots. Um, even though I'm a pro, I do not vouch for hitting the middle of the face all the time. Right, I'm going to hit a few now with RBZ and collect some numbers. It's another solid hit. It's a little bit up the right, which is a shame. So far on feel, the RBZ Black doesn't feel ridiculously cheaper. It has a different sound to the Sim Max, not quite as, as carbon and dead, because obviously there's no carbon in this driver. It's a little bit more high pitched, but it's not an offensive sound at all. I love the look of this driver behind the ball. I actually really like that black finish. I think it looks smart. Performance wise so far, numbers look decent. I'm intrigued to see the averages. Off centered hits, just from seeing it already, I feel like I'm getting more punished with RBZ Black when I've not quite found the middle. I've got one more to go with the RBZ Black. That is a solid last shot with RBZ Black. Right, let's, uh, that's a really good shot, probably the best of the bunch. Let's crunch the numbers, find out how much difference there actually is. So before we get into the data, what did I like looks and feel the best? For me, I actually gravitate towards the RBZ Black on look. Uh, for some reason, uh, whether it's because it's a bit different, a bit unique, I really like the look of that driver. But I do like Sim Max, I've mentioned in the past, but I'd probably give it to RBZ Black. Feel-wise, for me, unquestionably, Sim Max felt better. Whether it's that carbon crown or the face or whatever, this driver felt premium, it felt fast and it felt more familiar. So let's talk about dispersion first. Which driver hit it straighter? Well, Sim Max is all de designed for better accuracy with twist face, with inertia generator, the weight being more positioned back, all technologies that they claim hits it straighter. And for that price, you'd expect it to do so. 
the RBZ Black does not offer accuracy claims. Well, between the two, I've got to be honest, I saw not much difference. Both hit it fairly straight, but both still I could hit wild golf shots with. For triple the price, I didn't hit the Simax any straighter. Okay, so here comes the big one. How much difference in distance are there between these two drivers? considering the price difference and the technology difference apparently in this driver. Well, let's start off with SimMax. Very similar to my original review, I was carrying this driver 283 yards, which is decent for me with a driver. RBZ Black. For a third of the price, what was the difference in distance? Well, I was carrying this driver 272 yards. That's a difference of 11 yards between these two drivers. 400 pound, 130 pound, it boiled down to just 11 yards. Now, to some golfers watching, those 11 yards might be worth every single penny. I get that. The fact that you might be hitting short shots into the green, the fact that you might be absolutely wanting to peak performance with your driver, I get those 11 yards difference and I get the price tag. But what's interesting, if you are just a weekend golfer, if you just want a nice new tailor-made driver, which in my opinion looks as good as this and performs just as good as this, and for the price, this is not a bad shout. Many people watching those 11 yards might not mean anything and certainly will not mean anything in the difference of price between these two drivers.